What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I am back once again. So, how you rotate in Fortnite can make or break your game. If you head in the wrong way or position in the wrong spot, it won't matter how good you are, you know, with building and just ripping headshots, you're gonna get eliminated, guys. So, what are the secrets to successful rotations? Well, in this video, all right, I've got 12 incredible tips that is gonna have you rotating and surviving like a pro. These include practical ways to avoid early game encounters, the best places to position during the mid game, and how to rotate while saving as many mats as possible during the end game. We're gonna be breaking the video down into those three sections, man. It's gonna be so cool. So feel free to skip ahead, but you know I highly recommend you watch the entire thing so that you do not miss out on any of these excellent tips, okay? Like the video and check to see your sub, all right? And for our question of the day, what part of the game do you struggle with the most? Early, mid, or late? It's gotta be the late game for me, but you know, let me know your answer in the comments below, all right? Also, a reminder that Pro Guys has plenty of amazing tools to turn you into a successful player. Interactive group classes, coaching from the top 1%, and secrets directly from some of the game's top pros, all right? Check us out in the description. Also, check out my live class only on ProGuys.com or the Pro Guys app. Your motivation show is going down. Okay, so these first few tips are gonna be focused on the early game. But before we get started, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Now we're ready, let's go. We're gonna be defining that as from the moment you jump out of the battle bus to when the second circle appears, all right? That's the early game. And for our first tip is a way that you can predict the second zone in advance. The method is simple. Anytime you see the first circle spawn way on the edge of the map, like far north in the southeast corner, there's a high chance that the next one will also be on the edge. All right, but why? Okay, let me tell you why. Well, Fortnite determines every zone in reverse order, right? At the start of the match. If it didn't, end games near the edge of the map would never happen. Based on that fact, if you see that the first zone is at the edge of the map somewhere, there's a good chance it's there because the next zone is on the edge too. So the remaining three are more difficult to predict. But we know that most of the time, zones will avoid ending over water. Now, do these predictions work every time and for every zone? No, but there's still a high likelihood. And by just knowing that info, guys, we can plan ahead more accordingly. So like, if you already have to run far for the first circle, cause it's at the edge, then this second one will probably be really, really far too. And from that point on, man, you could just maybe decide to rotate earlier than usual to give yourself more time. Okay guys, so tip number two is to focus on building your inventory. All right, so to do that, you should avoid as many fights as possible. Of course, sometimes you're gonna be put in a situation where you're forced to fight early, I get it. And there's not much you can really do but to defend yourself. But if your goal is winning the game, you don't want to look for engagements at your drop spot, right? They waste time, they're random, and even if you win, I mean, they're still going to end up hurting your chances of getting a better placement down the line. So if your spot's contested, you can always try to play passive and rotate out early. But if you have the option, land somewhere secluded and somewhere safe. Then focus on gathering loot and upgrading your weapons, all right? Even if you make it into the next zone, at the last second, it's not really a big deal. Some players will even tank the storm for more looting time and then use their knowledge of campfire locations to heal up once they're in. Other than the loot though, I mean you should ideally leave your drop spot with max materials. But don't stress man, getting max mats too much, okay? Since you can usually just find stuff to farm on later. Alright, so what you should stress about <laughs> is finding mobility, man. Like, mobility items are a must in the current competitive landscape. So, prioritize finding crash pads as much as humanly possible. Seriously, like, if you manage to pick up six early on, your in game rotations will be golden. And if you can't find crash pads, peppers are fantastic too. They're dope. You know, if we're being honest, crash pads are simply better, man. Like, even if they may not, you know, even seem very useful, trust me when I say this, like, we're gonna show you a couple of remarkable ways to use them later on, all right? But in the meantime, the next way that you can have better rotations is to know your enemy rotation paths. And that includes enemies from every nearby drop spot. Now, obviously, <laughs> this is easier said than done. I get it. Like, sure, you can just open your map, draw straight lines from each POI to the safe zone, and assume they're gonna be at least one opponent on each line. But that won't always catch everybody. Sometimes players will stray away from their drop spots and just roam around in the middle of nowhere. So really, you have to be hyper aware. Always scout around yourself while rotating, okay? 
Like even when you're gliding in, try to catch a glimpse of how many players are landing nearby. That way, I mean, you can use the info to your advantage either to avoid enemies or get the jump on them if you're feeling aggressive. So in short, my friends, like try to keep a mental note about where enemies from nearby drop spots will rotate as the early game comes to a close, okay? But with the early game coming to a close, it's time for the mid game. All right, the mid game happens from zone two all the way until zone five. And usually you're better off playing it passively. So one way that you can do this is by rotating through the dead side. All right, so the concept of the congested versus dead sides of the zone is something that you have to know if you're going to play any sort of scram. Cash cup or really, you know, FNCS, right? What's the dead side? It's the side that has the fewest players rotating into it. In contrast, over the congested side is the part of the circle that more players are going to be rotating through. For instance, all right, if the first circle is in the southeast corner of the map, most rotators will be coming in from the north and west. That means the east and the south side are mostly only going to have a few players remaining, the ones that landed there to begin with. So always try to pad toward the dead side of the circle for zone two and beyond. It takes longer, but you know, it's something that you can save from storm fights or those pesky mid game battles everyone in the lobby seems to join. The next mid game tip is to know when to take fights. This is huge, man. Like the problem with mid game fights in general is that if they end up going on for too long, you lose a lot of materials. I mean, health items and eventually potentially mobility. And that's if you don't end up getting eliminated. And in those situations, guys, like when we're halfway to the end game, losing, oh my God, it's a big deal. So you gotta know when to take them, man. If you get a massive tag on somebody, like a shield break, think of these things. Do they have time to heal up? Is the storm going to close in on us? Are there any third parties nearby? And do I have the mats and heals to commit to this fight? If you answer yes to any of these questions, you're probably better off taking the small victory and just going back to more passive play. But be warned, some players are psychos and will retaliate as hard as they can if you shoot at them. So this last mid game tip is how to position correctly for each zone. Now zone one doesn't matter too much, but for zones two and three, totally different. Like you generally want to position near the center and on high ground. And that way you have a much better chance of being inside the next zone when it spawns. But don't think man, like you always have to be high or anything. Sometimes camping in a random house near the center can always work. But for circle four, it's really best to position somewhere on the edge, like base up and build with brick or metal and abuse the cone edit to keep a lookout of your surroundings, all right? This is the circle before the half in, half out one. So by playing the edge, you're taking the gamble and, you know, hoping that it spawns on you. So to summarize, play center for zones two and three and edge for zone four. All right, guys, so we're about to get into some more juicy tips for the end game, a lot of which, you know, we learned by talking to other pros and really analyzing their gameplay. If that's something that you want to do, remember that you can always reach out to one of our coaches on our site, man. They're amazing and they can dish out some amazing tips for you guys. Okay, so end game time, honestly, this is the time that most of us struggle. Here, and I mean like right here, even if we know how to tunnel, we still find ourselves dying early. Why is that? <laughs> well, you gotta follow these crucial tips, that's why. The first one is an essential one for moving zones. All right, stay ahead of the storm, guys. For most players, problems arise in the end game when they don't rotate quick enough. They mess up their tunnel or spend too long trying to pressure someone, then the storm catches up and they're screwed. But if you can stay ahead of the storm and be as close to the next safe zone as possible, you can avoid this from happening. Not only that, but it's gonna give you an edge over everyone else who's struggling to rotate in. <laughs> there are situations where you might not wanna rotate ASAP every single time, but in most games or scrim matches, it's the right play. All right, guys, the next tip for moving zones is to switch up which materials you're using. Now, ideally, you want a tunnel with hard mats, right? However, hmm, at some point or another, you know, you're gonna have to start using wood. So instead of just running through your brick and metal first, it's actually better to use a healthy balance of every material type. Why do this? Good question. It's really so, so that you don't stay maxed out on any of these material types. That way, when you find an LM, you're gonna be able to recover more mats than if you were still capped. So I suggest swapping to wood or brick when you're tarping or tunneling your way in, all right? And when you stop to box up, switch to metal. And if at any point you have much more of one material type than the others, start using that one. Overall, this consistent swapping of materials can take some getting really used to, I get it, but it'll result in you having more mats to work with for the end game, and that's what it's all about. All right, guys, so next tip is to focus on the storm. 
One thing is the timer. You have to be conscious of the storm clock ticking down so that you're 100% ready to look up when the new storm appears, okay? So many of us really don't pay attention when we should, and it ends with us just taking extra storm damage we shouldn't have. The next thing that you always have to be aware of is which direction the storm is moving and which way it came from. Knowing where it came from is crucial since the storm will often pull back to a spot you were previously at. You know, maybe your old tunnel will still be there <laughs> and you could just use it to save mass. Or maybe there's a previous high ground you can just launch pad toward to just snag high for yourself. It's very important to keep track of zone directions and if you don't, you're missing out on saving your materials and even mobility like launch pads. All right, but speaking of launch pads, another tip for you to try is to recycle enemy pads. Now, ideally, you should have at least one of your own pads, you know, you use for either zone five or six. But in cases where you don't, you're in a stacked lobby, right? And the zone's incredibly far, you might need to recycle someone else's. Even if you do have a launch pad, it's often better to just wait until the last second to use it just in case someone nearby places one of their own you can use. If you can see them rotating, chances are they don't have one and you should rotate too. All right, guys, so launch pads are just so very vital for in-game success. Like, anytime you can save or recycle one, you gotta do it. Now, it's time to talk about the mobility item that's becoming meta, my friends, and that is crash pads. These things have a ton of fantastic uses, but when it comes to rotating with them, there are a few insanely useful methods that you need to know. First off, always try to crash pad from inside your box and on a ramp of some sort. If you wanna go straight, you can just set up a ramp just slopping in the direction you wanna go then crash pad, but try not to have a floor above, you know, as it can decrease how far you go. Okay, so if you wanna go diagonal, there's a crazy cone edit that you can do, all right? Put a cone in your box, stand in the direction you wanna go diagonally, and then do the Dorito edit on the cone, starting with the tile next to you, then the one opposite to it. This should create a very, like, steep ramp, all right? So get up on it, touch your crash pad, and then you're gonna go flying much further than a standard ramp. The one odd thing though, all right, is that this didn't work with the metal cone in our testing. <laughs> it would just bug out the pad, so just keep that in mind. It only works with brick or wood. Then there's the double crash pad. Now, while you're in the air, after your initial one, you could just toss another on the ground, and the momentum carries you into an incredible length. I think you can get up to like 100 meter rotation with just two crash pads. So this is what you should be trying to do on most of your rotations. Crash pad out at the last second and toss another to go as far as you can. Okay guys, our last tip is to avoid congestion during the end game. Typically, most players are situated on the low ground. They're gonna be a decent amount of mid ground and the fewest amount of players high up. Which layer you're on can make a huge difference in whether you bump into enemies during your rotation. So, you're gonna see pro players switch layers often, right? If you're tunneling and spot too many opponents next to you, you gotta go up a layer. If you're directly under height, AKA second height, that's one of the most dangerous spots to be, guys. So going down a layer is what you might wanna do. All right, guys, so another thing that you can do to avoid congestion is to rotate on the edge of the storm. Most players rotate through the middle. So the sides are usually a lot more free. Not only that, man, but with the storm on your side, you can conserve materials too. So there are cost-effective tunnels like, you know, the two-piece that just uses a floor and a ramp. That alone can block off almost every angle if you're rotating on the edge of the storm, all right? Knowing how to tunnel plays a key role in success in in-games, it really does. So if you're looking to learn how to do that, our advanced tunneling course over at Pro Guys can teach you how to become a tunneling pro in no time. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today, man. Make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, man, show us some love. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy and check out my new live show, man. Hey, you got somebody in your corner that believes in you, man. That's your boy, me. Here we go. Peace.